In the tour of the canal house so far, I've taken you all the way up into the attic. In this episode, we're staying in the attic and taking a look at the bathroom and the attic bedroom. Ah, it seems we have disturbed someone doing the ironing. Let's just leave them at their task and continue the tour. Behind the curtain in the doorway we find the washing machine, conveniently located close to the bedroom and the bathroom, which can be found on the other side of this attic hallway. This hallway is situated behind the bathroom and can only be reached through the door openings of the landing, the bathroom and the bedroom. It made it very difficult to install the beams and the light, which I forgot to do when I built the space initially, around 2010. But although it took something like 20 tries to get the beams to fit, I did finally manage it, greatly helped by a small mirror and the camera. Moral of the story? Maybe the removable walls I made on the other floors weren't such a bad idea after all. And even though the beams in this space really aren't visible, the light in here does make a big difference, as you can see the glow through the door openings. Now let's get back to the tour. The door on the right here leads into the bathroom. The bathroom is made much more spacious through the addition of the dormer, which I showed you in the previous episode. In the story of the house, the bathroom was installed around 1930 and hasn't changed much in all those years. Oh, come on guys, toilet seat down please. And maybe you could just recycle the empty toilet paper rolls, hmm? They could have cleaned up a bit more. They knew I was coming. Anyway, the toilet, sink and bath came from Chrysenbon. I never know how to pronounce that. Chrysenbon? 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 <laughs> The soap dispensers came from Shepherd Miniatures and the mug holding a box of toothpaste was painted by me. The mirror was simply made from an old frame I had and the light, which I painted a bronze color to match the mirror, is a fairly standard brass one from Heidi Ott. I like the glass shade and the way it casts pretty shadows on the walls and ceiling. Next to the sink is a small mahogany chest of drawers for storing all those bathroom essentials. The chest was made by a scutcheon. On top of the chest we can see a mother of pearl cutthroat razor, a hairbrush, a shaving stand with tilting mirror, candles, bowls, cups and a shaving brush and all these lovely items are made by LNA Saint Leger. I'm not sure how to pronounce this name either. This wonderful manicure set is by the same makers. It has finely detailed nail scissors, a file and cuticle tools. The little nail buffer has a chamois leather pad for buffing your nails until they sparkle. Someone has left their shoes on the floor. These stylish sandals with metal see-through soles and heels were made by Patrizia Santi. I love these shoes, such a wonderful and interesting design. The other shoes, a pair of classic Converse basketball shoes, were made by me in a class taught by Valeria Bonomi during the Miniature in Tune summer school in Denmark. On the other side of the room there's a clawfoot bath. I painted the outside of the tub green 
to match the beautiful ceramic wall tiles, which were made by Terry Curran. The bath faucet, valve and shower head were designed by Paper Doll Miniatures, 3D printed by Shapeways and I spray painted them with chrome paint. On the little shelf is another soap dispenser from Shepherd Miniatures. I made the shower rail by bending some brass rod and I made the shower curtain from a lovely arts and crafts fabric lined with green silk matching the bath and tiles. The small bath mat was my first attempt at weaving. I built my own little loom and had fun experimenting. And this first attempt of course is full of mistakes, but I like to keep it around as a memory of my learning journey. The basket holding fresh towels was made by me as well. It was one of my first attempts at basket weaving. And, if I may say so, much more successful than the bath mat. And the floor tiles were also made by me. I used thick paper which I painted with a marble-like pattern, cut into squares, glued down, varnished with a matte varnish and then grouted. Simple but effective. Let's not keep the bathroom occupied any longer. There was another door in the hallway. Let's find out what's behind that one. This is the door to the attic bedroom. The bedroom is situated at the back of the canal house and because of the west facing window it is a lovely light room. The left wall of the room is papered with a beautiful wallpaper from Susan Bembridge. The design is Daisy, the earliest wallpaper designed by William Morris. The blue wall on the right is covered with painted wooden planks just like I did in the hallway and on the landing. Well, I say wooden, but here again the planks were made from strips of thick paper. I made the bed myself from wood, upholstered it with fine white linen and made a striped mattress for it. Because I liked the mattress so much, I didn't want to cover it up with sheets. So in the story of the house, the sheets are just being changed. That must be what we saw being ironed at the beginning of this episode. The elegant vintage corset was made by Ushi Schiefner. I'm afraid I can't remember who made the knitted blanket. I bought it in Denmark during the summer school in Thune. The duvet was printed by me. And the pretty embroidered cushion was made by Ellie de Kraker. On the wall behind the bed are some pretty frames and another embroidered piece by Ellie de Kraker. In fact, all the embroidered pieces in this room were made by Ellie. Next to the bed is a beautiful bedside table, which is actually an antique jewellery box from around 1900, which came from my great-grandparents. It has a gilt exterior with enamel inlay and a glass lid. I love this box and it suits the room perfectly. On top of the box is a book I made, a bedside lamp with a shade I prettified with some lovely floral ribbon, a Gert Felka perfume bottle, a vase with flowers I made from a kit, and a beautiful gold necklace. The necklace was made by Ursula Sturmer and has real stones in it, crystal, topaz and tourmaline. On the floor in front of the bed is my second attempt at weaving. I am improving, but I still need to learn a lot. The pretty slippers were made by Ellie. The gorgeous carpet was also made by Ellie. The pattern and colors are so beautiful and so perfect for this room. I love this piece. I made the little blue house from a kit, which I received for renewing a magazine subscription. I changed the house a little bit and based the style and colors on the wooden houses of the beautiful village just outside Amsterdam called Broek in Waterland. 
It must be the miniature version of a house belonging to one of the ancestors of the owner of the canal house. Well, it could be. Who knows? The little stitched sheep picture, again Ellie's work, is the same one as in the bedroom one floor lower. The fun big 18th century style wig with the feathers and a butterfly and the butterfly picture are both by, to me, unknown makers. I bought them from Karen Cunningham Miniatures. On the other side of the room, a box of keepsakes came all the way from Australia. It was made by Norma Bennett of Make Mine Mini and I received it as a gift because I was the first follower of her blog. The girl in the photo is Norma's mother, photographed with all of her toys. Some other items which were in the box live in the main bedroom. The wooden hat box was made by me and the tiny purse and the slippers are more examples of Ellie's stitching. The chair was upholstered by me in a class by Nancy Summers during the 2007 IGMA Guild School, where I was so lucky to be a scholarship student that year. The wooden peg doll is by Dave Pennant of Teeny Weeny Teddies and it is the sister to the doll in the dining room. This girl hasn't aged as well as her sister downstairs. I think she has suffered from being played with a bit more. Oh, I do love this room. The pretty colors which all go so well together and the comfortable bed surely are inviting for a place to stay as a guest. So, anyone want to go on a mini vacation? <laughs>